Oh man, I really, I really need to get back into brewing. What's this? Wine, cider, or mead in just a week? There's no way. You can get mead, which is honey wine, for four hundred nine a bottle. I'm gonna show you how. Head to Walmart, get two things oh, of apple juice cow. for a dollar sixty two each, three twenty four total. Honey, six forty three. Then you need your bruisey bags. These are nineteen ninety nine for three, so six sixty seven yes, each. And your total comes to sixteen thirty four. Divided by four bottles, which is what each batch oh, of bruisey makes. Four hundred nine per bottle. Literally the cheapest way to drink. Life hack. Four oh nine per bottle. I got. This can't be real. I gotta look it up. I mean, here we go. It's, it's gotta be real. Bruisey. That's what this is. Let's see, what, how much do I gotta pay for this to happen? Seven to nine days for 12%? I mean, okay, starter kit, let's see. What's, what's the starter kit gonna run me? 50 bucks. Okay, okay, 50 bucks, what do I get? It says, Bruzy is the best way to get started making wine, cider, or mead at home with any juice. One kit makes 12 bottles of incredible wine, cider, or mead in seven days. 35 minutes to start. You know what, let's go ahead and buy this basic kit. You gotta make some new brew. All right, here we go. Now we wait. Only 50 bucks, let's see what I get with this sucker. A referral, referral, anyone need a referral? We'll see if uh, this is worth it in the end. Bruzy bag refills, oh heck yeah. Okay, cranberry wine. Favorite bruzy recipe, start out your wine making journey. Got a whole recipe card. Come back to that bad boy. Ooh, got some, these are airlocks. So these will go on top of our bottle. Or if we had a glass jug, which I don't have any of those. And the infamous bruzy bag. So this is my yeast. Fine fermenting blend. Got three of them. Okay, got a couple things. Let's check this bad boy out. Let's go to the store. Let's see if we can, um, let's see if we can make some homebrew today. Here we go. All right, Bruzy, what's up here? Tell me what to do. I'm a beginner at this. Equipment, one gallon jug, plastic or glass. I got three. I'm doing three things today. Next step, airlock stopper. Shout out to Bruzy for that guy. Two 64 ounce ocean spray crayon blackberry bottles. They said, excuse me, Cranberries on the front of this thing and cran blackberry. I did not get the right thing. I got I got a plethora of stuff today. I got cranberry. We're gonna make a cranberry wine, cran mango cider, and cran watermelon mead. One and three quarter cup of sugar and a bruisey bag. Here is my sugar. Honey, because we're making mead, which is a honey-based beverage. In seven days. All right, step one. All right, step one, pour both your juice bottles into the one gallon jug. Let's go ahead and designate these bad boys. Number two, to make space for sugar and fizzing, pour two cups of juice. You can refrigerate them for later. I got plenty of space here. Uh, one and three quarter cup of sugar to your juice. So the cider's a little different, instructions, so I had to look it up. They want me to add 324 grams of sugar to the cider, so I'm gonna do that real fast. Cider sugar, we got our mead, which is back here. It says, they say to add between two and three pounds of honey. Luckily I've got a couple pounds here. I do have a scale. All right, here we go, two pounds of honey. Let's stay on the lighter side of this. Got a little ambitious with my fill line. Okay, it's two pounds of honey. What now, bruisey friends? Got all my sugars in here. Shake to dissolve sugar. Luckily, I've got a stopper right here. Here we go. All right, we're shaking up. What next, Bruzy? 
Add one whole bruisey bag, then shake again. Okay. Here we go, one to each of them. arms hurt. Put your rubber stopper and airlock on top on top of the gallon jug. Then fill the plastic part to the fill line, I guess with water. Label your bruisey with the included stickers and give it a name. All right. Cover your jug with a towel or blanket and then put it in the warmest place you can. Keep your wine in a warm, dark place for five days. If you have time, be sure to give it a swirl once a day to keep things moving. After five days are up, taste test your wine to see if it's dry enough for your liking. Just a taste for sweetness here, not flavor. If it's too sweet, leave it in a warm, dark place for three more days. If it's dry enough, too tart, too sour, continue to the next step. I'll see you in a few days. All right, here we are, post-fermentation. Now I have them in front of me. You see that one of them has less meat in it. The other two are kind of normal. Let me tell you what happened. So all of these started fermenting. You can tell by the bubbling that happens in the container and the airlock will normally bubble. It kind of says that fermentation is going on. They started going. At five days, I did the tasting that it says and tried to decide if I liked where they're at, meaning if I liked the sweetness level and blah, blah, blah. So the only one that was ready to go, in my opinion, at that five day mark was the cider. So what happened was I took the top of the airlock, which is just the cap that they provide to you, and I put that right on top, I put the rest of the airlock away, and I put that cider into my fridge. So that basically was the, the place where we started to cold crash and it causes the yeast to stop fermenting, or should at least, and everything starts to settle to the bottom. I waited about three more days, again, per the instructions here, for the mead and the wine. Tasted those again at that three days later mark, and I was like, okay, I think they're good enough, and we did the same thing. Took the caps off the airlocks, put the caps on there, and we put them in the fridge. So everything sat in the fridge. They sat for a couple days, and we went ahead and just let them be. So you'll notice the mead is kind of empty. I'm gonna get to that in a second but let's go ahead and taste these and see what they're like. I think I'm gonna start with the cider. So here we go. Hmm. He's about to make a poor choice. He needs something to save him from his future self. That's me. So I'm gonna tell you about Z-Biotics. Z-Biotics is a probiotic drink before you drink. This thing right here is a very small little bottle as you can see. This thing will actually save you from some um, bad feelings after you go out in the night and drink or you drink some of this brew he's about to drink. So here's how this works. When you drink, like he's about to, your body creates acetaldehyde. I'm definitely gonna butcher that again, in your gut. That is what is responsible for that feeling of not feeling so great the next morning because your body doesn't know what to do with that. It can't really process it super well and so it just kind of sits around and that's why you feel bad in the mornings. The way to fix this is through Z-Biotics. Z-Biotics literally is a probiotic drink. You drink it before you actually go out and party and drink your stuff. So this creates good bacteria in your gut which takes that acetaldehyde and it breaks it down really just does something with it so you don't have to have the same body feeling. And you're supposed to still hydrate when you do this. When you drink it before, it's it's preparing your gut for the future. So Zbiotics has created this little small, I think it's a half fluid ounce, super small amount. You drink one of these before you go out, drink your water, drink your beer, do whatever else. And then the next morning, you shouldn't have the same problems that you might normally have. So. If you're interested in having that feeling for yourself, then you can go pick up your own Z-Biotics little pack um, for yourself. You can use my link, which is on screen, or this little QR code, and that will take you to the website, and you will get 15% off your first order. You can find that link in the description as well. I'm gonna leave this right here. We're gonna let him get back to his business. Maybe he'll notice it. Okay, that was weird. Time passed. That was not there before. 
pre-alcohol probiotic. I mean, I'm about to drink some alcohol. Here we go. Okay, I, I think I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready to try these brews. Here we go. Okay, so this is the cider. We got the crayon watermelon. It's pretty, I mean, it's pretty good. Sweet, it's got the tart side. There is clear some, clearly some um, sugar, residual sugar there. Not really any booze taste to this. I feel like it's pretty low ABV, um, honestly. It's just got that sugary side, which everyone loves sugar. I mean, it's not bad. Low ABV, I can see why people would crush this. It does honestly just feel like I'm still drinking the, the cider itself, or excuse me, the juice itself. All right, let's go over to the wine. See what the wine's like. Oh yeah, this one's a little more tart. Still has sweetness to it. It's also still, I will note, still fermenting. It's been in the fridge this whole time, but there is bubbling still occurring, which means that there's still some fermentation happening and that's not necessarily a great thing. There is a little bit of yeastiness, which is happens when you ferment. These are pretty young, so I don't know that they're exactly ready. Honestly, like at their best, they're okay. It's definitely got a little more booziness to it though, meaning I can taste the alcohol. <laughs> Still sugary, a little bit of tart side. It's not bad. I can see why people would like it. And last but not least, we got the mead right here. The mead is definitely still sweet. It's got a lot of honey character, a lot of floral side. I drink a lot of mead, try a lot of mead. Definitely still yeasty, like I talked about. These are not necessarily clear, but there is a, a clarifying setup thing as it talks about. There's a finishing it up set side. It says, you know, leave your wine in the fridge for two more days. That sediment we talked about settles to the bottom. It says after two or more days, you can rack the brew, meaning you can pour it from one container to another, essentially. And um, you're trying to avoid getting that bottom layer of sediment. So you can do that. There's some issues that arise with that. I'll talk about here in a little bit. You can clarify, I got gypped. Bruzy, you gypped me. This says optional, clarify your wine further by adding the Go Clear packet that comes with your Bruzy kit. I got no Go uh, Go Clear packet in mind, so 50 bucks for that. And last but not least, your wine is ready to drink. Overall, these three are not bad. They're just sweet. You can tell there's alcohol present in a couple of them. I can see why people would like them and I can see how you would brew something like this, brew, and um, and feel like you've accomplished something big, especially if you don't brew a lot. This seems like a simple task here. They are making brewing simple and they are definitely um, good with their marketing, which is uh, helpful, obviously. Now, I do wanna talk about the next steps. You know, why is this one halfway empty, the meat halfway empty? That's because I went ahead and bottled some of this. This is where life gets dangerous. <laughs> I literally took, I gotta find him. I took two champagne bottles that I had that were empty, of course, and I went ahead and put a funnel on top of this guy and poured, like it says, like the racking portion, poured into each bottle. And I tried to avoid getting the bottom layer sediment and all those things and did what I could. Okay, so I did that with this one right here. I also did it with this one right here and I put a danger label on this. This one went right back in the fridge, sat in the fridge and theoretically didn't have any fermentation and just, aged. This one sat outside in the room, in the room temp situation. So this literally got back up to room temp, which if there was yeast in here, that allowed for them to start fermenting again. And we'll talk about that right now. Here's the video of me opening both of these brews. And um, then I'll, I'll let it speak for itself. All right, I got both bottles. This one has been in the fridge the whole time. Should not have any issues, but let's find out. Oh no. <laughs> okay, that one. That's, that's not good. <laughs> that's the one that's been in the fridge. This one sat outside of the fridge, which means it's more carbonated. Uh-oh. That's very carbonated and dangerous. So as you can see, both of them re-fermented. The one that was in the fridge, re-fermented. You can see it right here. There is carbonation in this thing, which is a little bit of a dangerous game because 
Carbonation in bottles that can't handle, handle pressure leads to bottle bombs. Bottle bombs are literally explosive bottles. Bad news. If something's not done fermenting and you just bottle it, it'll happen, it'll explode. Same thing for this guy. This is the one that sat outside the fridge and it's even more carbonated. Holy cow. If these had not been in champagne bottles, these corks would have flown out the, or the bottle would have exploded. It would have been terrible and bad news. I literally left these, left both of these like this for five days and this is what happened. So because we didn't let it finish fermenting, we created this issue. That right there is just a small example of many issues that can arise with this bruisey experience. And I actually wanna talk about it real fast. So um, I'm gonna clear this off and then let's talk about all of the possible issues you might run into with this. All right, in order for us to really dive down and fix these things and talk about them, we gotta go back to the beginning of the video and I'm gonna break it down for you. So here's the beginning. Let's talk about issue number one, which is this right here. You notice at the beginning of this card, it doesn't talk anything about sanitizing. Sanitizing is the act of literally killing off any bad bacteria, any yeast, anything that can cause an infection in the brew. Whenever you're using just the juice bottle, you might have less of an experience with this, which is okay, you know, that's normal. If you are pouring your juice into any other container and it's not sanitized, you are running the risk of infection, meaning that some other yeast, a wild yeast, gets in there and starts to mess up the whole brew in the situation you're in. You do not want that, because that will actually just kill your fermentation, create a bad product, and just waste money. So sanitizing, there's lots of brewing grade sanitizers out there. I would dissuade you from using um, soap, or just hot water, because they kind of do the job. Soap can definitely, unless you get all the residue out, is not gonna be great. So that's issue number one. Let's go ahead and zoom a little further in the video and talk about the next thing. All right, so we're at the point where we mix the sugar and everything in. So I have poured my sugar in and you notice that I'm, I'm gonna shake it like crazy. Unless you are shaking super vigorously, your uh, room temp liquid is probably not going to dissolve all the sugars you need. Therefore, you're gonna run some issue, run into some issues. So I would suggest to um, maybe heat your liquid up if you can slightly, or just like shake for a really, really long time. Otherwise, that sugar is not gonna dissolve very well. Okay, and here we go. Here's another thing. Bruzy is making this simple. They want you to not have to think about much. You're just throwing your yeast in, you're creating alcohol. Uh, you don't really know how much alcohol you have here though. And if you're anybody who cares about that, you're gonna wanna know. So step one is to have a thing called a hydrometer. A hydrometer is a gravity, specific gravity measuring tool, which specific gravity is how much sugar content normally is in your brew. It puts it, or it gauges it on a scale. And so you use this hydrometer and you float it in the liquid. And when you do that, it floats to a certain point. When you record that number, you are writing down the starting gravity, and then whenever it's done fermenting, you take another gravity reading, and you basically are able to calculate how alcoholic your brew is. Also, you're able to figure out how much residual sugar is there, which is helpful. Bruzy doesn't talk about this because it's a little bit uh, more advanced than a normal brewer's thing, but the whole reason that my bottles blew up a little bit earlier is because there was leftover sugar and those yeast kept fermenting and it could have been dangerous. So gravity readings are really helpful, not just to know that you have a 7% brew, but also to keep you from blowing up bottles. So that kind of takes me to talk about this right here. These are not done fermenting. When I took them out of the, uh, basically when they were done fermenting, according to Bruzy, you have residual sugar that is still there. Your yeast are still rocking and rolling. So because they're still moving, that act of putting them in the fridge is what we call cold crashing. Cold crashing is this method of halting yeast fermentation by getting them to a cold point where they won't actually ferment anymore. Just to be honest with you, mine still fermented even in the cold. So they're not really done fermenting until they run out of gas, AKA sugar. So do not do what I did and bottle a brew that's not done fermenting. You're just gonna lead into some issues for yourself. So I highly recommend to avoid that. 
Bruzy should really mention on there that there is still sugar and to not leave it out in a room temp situation, especially even in the fridge, you're running into some issues. Again, some people are gonna say that's not an issue for you, but I can only imagine if somebody were to go ahead and try to bottle those and then just let them set for a week or two or more, they would be really disappointed with what happened. So then that takes us to this whole racking portion or the bottling side. I can show you a racking video with this. When you're pouring your liquid into another vessel, you're introducing oxygen. If you know anything about wine making, when you, if you take your wine bottle and you pour the wine into a glass and you walk away for a couple hours, you've oxygenated that brew. You've added oxygen in and what happens to that wine? It goes, it goes south, it's not good anymore. Same thing for here. You're adding oxygen and it's not a good situation to pour. There's an easy fix for this. It's called a auto siphon and there's some tubing that connects to it. It's a way to move brews without them hitting the oxygen and it's just basically eliminating that problem. Bruising doesn't mention this, but you are probably not getting the best product whenever you just pour your liquid into something else. It doesn't work well. And it's, it's a shame that they're letting other people experience that problem. So if you can avoid that, that's great. But man, that is, a, that is bad. And last thing is this gravity reading side. We talked about the beginning gravity, the final gravity. If you know how much sugar is left in your brew, that's just helpful to know for you. It also is helpful to know if you need to worry about a bottle bomb exploding. I do not want anybody taking a bottle of brew, that, of bruisey brew that they have done and left some sweetness in there to their Uncle Frank. You don't tell Uncle Frank that you know, you need to put it in the fridge or whatever, and he opens that bottle and all of that residual sugar has been fermented on, you're just gonna have an explosion and Uncle Frank is not gonna be happy. So Bruzy is creating issues, possible bottle bombs. They don't talk about it. Their little note card is, is cutesy and, and looks like they're, they're doing things that are helping you. But just to be honest with you, they're creating issues. Brewing is simple. Brewing can also be dangerous. And just because you're, you uh, throw some yeast into something doesn't mean that you are doing it necessarily right. So if you do this, if you brew with Bruzy, there are some things you gotta watch for, and I'm sure I might've missed some, but watch out for those things. Now, I do wanna take us to another part of this. I wanted to test how far can you push a entire Bruzy packet. You get the Bruzy packet and they say one gallon, but is it really one gallon? So here's what I did. I went and spent even more money. I bought a ton of juice to now press and push these bruisey packets further. I bought $60 worth of this, I think it was crayon pineapple or crayon mango juice and three more bruisey packets. I then went ahead and mixed in, I, I took two gallons of that juice and put it in a container, I took three gallons of juice, put it in a container, put four gallons of juice, put it in a container, added the amount of sugar to make the wine, and then I pitched a singular bruisey packet into each. And I think we need to show you the results of that. Here they are, all three of these. Two gallons, three gallons, four gallons. I wanna spoil something for you. One bruisey packet does not just cover one gallon of brew. You can make up to four gallons of brew. All of these have finished fermenting. And when I say finished, I mean they've gone and eaten and had all the sugar they can from each one. So Bruzy's saying that they, their packet can only take you to one gallon, they're getting even more money from you. One packet, one Bruzy pack, and all of its superbness can get up to four gallons. And I'm gonna taste this right here. Uh, quick little editor's note. One thing I did not note when saying this is that if you do a larger brew, it will take more time especially more time than what the actual paper says. It might take you three weeks, four weeks to ferment through four gallons of this brew using one bruisey bag instead of the five to seven days it says. This is because your yeast go through a budding process where they will generally start to increase the amount of yeast there. They go through essentially all their cellular changes and more yeast are created. There needs to be a bigger yeast colony for this fermentation to go faster. So a small amount of yeast in one little bruisey packet can do four gallons, but it will take longer than one gallon. Just a quick note. Here it is, here's the four gallon one. Four gallon still has a little bit of sweetness to it, but it's fermented through everything. 
these yeasts have been able to continue to ferment. And I know that some of you who know how to brew are saying, well, it's a small amount of yeast and they're probably stressed and they'll put off off flavors. And that might be true, but we don't really know how much yeast is in that bruisey packet. All I'm saying is bruisey is milking you for more money than you probably need to spend. You could probably get, I would say, eight to 10 gallons of brew from a you know three bruisey pack set. Or you can make, let's say, three or four gallons of brew with one bruisey pack. There's no need to spend even more money than you need to. Now I could cold crash these, but I need a big fridge and I, I didn't want to do that, honestly. So that's an, an important factor here. Bruzy is making a lot of money off you. They made a lot of money off me. They made at least 70 bucks. And then I also spent all the money on the juice and other stuff. So they're making their money from you. I do want to mention that Bruzy has great marketing. I don't want to, I'm going to dog on them because that's, they need to be dogged on. But also they've got good marketing which is what sells you. They've also got some really silly videos. I want you to watch this quick tasting video and tell me if you spot anything weird. So I gave it to a couple of my friends to try and here's what they had to say. This stuff's delicious. Yeah, it is. Refreshing. Let's drink the rest. Maybe I'm not good at reading people, but that reaction did not seem genuine to what they tasted. Also, Bruzies, if you notice on their YouTube, Generally, it's the same person doing all the brewing stuff. And I say that as somebody, I'm the singular person normally on most of my videos, but I've had a lot of other people taste my stuff. So it's a little bit iffy on quality based off of how many people have actually tried it. They've got good marketing. They make a lot of money. They make it seem affordable. But again, you can press your, you can push your bruisey packets further than it says. I don't know. I, I will let you formulate your own opinions about them. If you're curious and want to brew and you don't want to do the whole bruisey thing, there's ways around it that are much easier. You can actually buy a lot more yeast and get a lot further and spend less money if you'll just go out and buy some basic wine yeast and you can get them at homebrew stores, Amazon, online uh, homebrew shops. There's a ton of places to buy this yeast and I'll recommend some right here for you. These are all purpose yeasts you can use that are great for fermenting. I highly recommend you try to brew something because it's a lot of fun, honestly. You don't necessarily need to use Bruzy. I think that's the bare bones of this argument. So my final thing is if you really love the Bruzy idea, you can actually go and make the little Bruzy bags for way cheaper. In fact, I'm gonna let my friend doing the most tell you about that. He's made a fantastic video basically detailing how to make a Bruzy bag and save a ton of money. And we've talked about today, they make a lot of money from those little bruisey bags. You can make them for like 15% of the price. So I'll link that video below, but you should do that. You should go and make some stuff. Bruisey, you're doing a great job with your marketing, but you're also creating issues for brewers. I love the idea of making people feel more welcome in the brewing sphere. And I hope that we can, we can maybe collaborate. You might not want to collaborate with me after this video, but maybe we can get together and figure out how to make a more clear and concise brewing product for you that won't lead to possible bottle bombs or explosions or weird alcohols that get created. And they make, they tote, you can make a lot of interesting alcohols with their stuff. So we'll see. Anyways, I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been a pretty interesting episode. Um, and I make a lot of mead content, but I also make some beer and some wine and stuff like that every once in a while. If you want to support the channel, feel free to hit like and subscribe and do all that stuff. But uh, I, I'm, I know I'm not going to make my money back from this video. I spent at least 160, 170 bucks on this video alone. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. But thanks for watching. Cheers.